so this week's video is for the mod squad challenge it's just a tutorial on the card that i posted if you haven't checked it out yet it's over at modsquadchallenge.com i would love for you guys to join us we've been getting so many entries every week and it's just a fun community where you get to see different ideas you don't have to use the stamps that i'm using you're going to use whatever the theme is that i posted um but we're going to be making the card today. So this is the three-step basket from Kitchen Sink Stamps. And for today's flowers, I'm going to be using the three-step pansies. So my idea that I have is to do a basket with overflowing pansies and make it a fun spring card. Last month I did the daffodil um, card. And um, I'm really into this kind of spring, let's bring it on kind of mood, right? I'm tired of all the snow. So I'm just going to be using a um, variety of mini inks that I have on hand. I have some Altenew. I have some Hero Arts. Um, and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have the large basket out. I've already have it mounted to my mini Misty. This paper is a piece of Nina Solar White. I believe it's five and a quarter by four. And we're going to start with the lightest color. This is a three-step basket. So the lightest color of brown that I have from Altenu, my mini ink pads, is called Rocky Shores. And I believe I have my lighting and my mount all fixed now, so we should be okay there. And I always say, don't worry about the first layer of the basket because you're really not going to see that too much. That's just the background layer. And because I'm using the mini inks, it looks a little splotchy. You can always go back in and re-stamp it if you want it to be less splotchy. I do recommend when you're doing the layering stamps to use some kind of stamp positioning tool. It does make it easier when lining everything up. a miss on my stamp. I think that did that last time too. Right there. Let's see if we can get that to stamp. There we go. Just didn't give it enough pressure. That's all. Okay. All right. So then the next layer of the basket, we're going to just clean this off quick. And I've said this before, but I've always been a fan of kitchen sink stamps because their layering stamps are beautiful. They give you directions. They give you color combinations. So it makes it really simple. There are some layering companies out there and you're like, what is going on? So this top layer tells you what's number one, if I could put it on here correctly. So that was number one. So number two is going to be the one above it. And it's going to be a little more detailed and we're going to go in with the second color and all i do here is just line up the stamp and then on the basket stamp it's pretty easy i just kind of line up the top there's like a little hump right there so i line that up and that looks pretty good just checking this left side over here and we're going to go in with the next darkest color, which is Mocha. Because I'm using these mini ink pads, you're going to see a little bit of streaking. That's okay. Um, the colors do tend to even out once you stamp them. Um, if you don't like that, you can go to a larger full-size pad and you won't have all of that. All right, that came out pretty good. I am going to stamp it twice. Pretty rich and dark. All right, 
And then the last one is marked number three. And in this set, there are three different sizes of baskets. This is the largest one. There's a medium basket and there's a small basket. Okay, so same thing on this. I'm going to line up the top of the basket. I'm also going to make sure that I try to line up the basket handle. You can actually see a line where it's not supposed to be stamped, where it's um, leaving like a shadow for the handle. So you want to just line that up. And then our darkest color of ink for this one is called Espresso. Pretty simple card. We can use this for Easter. We can use it for birthday. We can use it for Mother's Day. We can use it for sympathy. Flowers are all year round beautiful on cards. That looks really good. And I'm going to do one more. So the last layer is usually the darkest layer and it's the one that has the most detail. All right, look how nice that came out. Doesn't it look like a realistic basket? I love it. All right, so we're done with the basket stamps. Now, Kitchen Sink Stamps has a variety of different floral stamps. Um, I use the um, daffodils last time, last month. Um, this time I'm gonna use the pansies. I also have the um, hyacinths. I have the irises. Um, quite a few of their floral stamp sets just because they're so beautiful and they just they just go with everything and you it's your imagination you can make them any color you want okay so now we're going to bring in the pansy set and there are several different sizes of pansies on here so you have this large pansy and it tells you 1a 2a 3a 4a 5a so there's that, and then there's this medium size one, which is the B series, 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B. And then we have the C series, 1, 2, 3, 4, C, and the D series. So we have um, 1, 2, 3, and 4 with the D series. We also have a smaller pansy, which is this little E series here. And we have a couple of little bugs on here. I think this is a little B on here. Um, there's a little guy down here. I think it's all 1B. So we have layer 1, 2, and 3 for our little B. And we have some greenery. So these are the leaves. 1, 2, 3 for the leaves. 1, 2 for the leaves here. And 1, 2, 3 for leaves here. So several different sizes of flowers, several different sizes of leaves. And we have a little B guy to go here. Now here are some that were stamped out and cut out already. But I don't want to use these. I'm just going to stamp out some fresh ones here. And if you need ideas, you can head on over to Kitchen Sink Stamps. There's a whole bunch of ideas there in color combinations as well. Alright, so I'm going to bring out some more Altenew inks. I have some orange, some yellows, some greens, some purple, so lots of bright colors that I believe would look good in this basket. And I'm also going to put the mask on the basket. I have a little um, piece of masking paper that I used last time. I saved it on the outside of my packaging. So we're going to reuse this mask for our basket. If you don't have masking paper, you can use post-it paper as well. This way when we stamp around the basket, now this one's lost a little bit of its stickiness here. I'm just gonna put some temporary adhesive down on the basket here. And this will rub right off once we're done with all of our stamping. It won't stick. Nancy's bloopers. Here we go. You 
because I'm too lazy to cut out another mask. So we're gonna use what we have. We'll just put some temporary adhesive on here. And again, that temporary adhesive will rub off. And actually, I'm gonna take it a step further and just put the magnet on the basket. That'll hold it in place. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with this bigger one. Um, you know what, I think I'll put that one right in the middle. And then we'll do some smaller flowers in front of it, like that. And for this one, I think I wanna do the traditional yellow and purple. So I'm gonna start with the lightest yellow, which is um, actually the second lightest yellow in the Altenew set. And this one's called, because we have one, two, three, four, five layers to this flower, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So this one is called Fresh Lemon. So we're gonna do that for the largest first layer. This is the first time I'm actually using this set on a card. Oh, that is super pretty. Fresh Lemon, oh, I like that a lot. All right, so I'll just wipe my stamp off. When I'm using the stamp blocks, I have like a little sponge that I wipe them off on. When I'm using them on the little mini misty here, I just use a sponge. And, I mean, just use the rag and wipe them off. Okay, so I'm lining up this outer edge here on the left where that indentation comes in. Sorry, no, sorry, it's on the right, the smaller indentation, that's what we wanna line up. Yes, because what that will do is line up the center of the flower, so we're lining up over here, and there's a little indentation, so the two smaller indentations here on the stamp, those are the two we wanna line up on the pansy. And what it will do is it'll line up those two sides, it will also line up the center of the flower. So not on the left side or you'll be off alignment, you wanna line up the right side here the two smaller indentations. So we're gonna go in with the next color yellow, which is called maple yellow. thinking I stamped it upside down. Uh-oh. This is where I have to stop and look at the directions, guys, because I think I stamped it upside down. I guess it doesn't matter. Does it matter? Maybe a little bit it matters. Okay, here we go. All right, I believe this is the correct direction. What I'm trying to do is just line up the center. Guess we'll find out together. All I did here was basically just line up the center. I don't know, guys. It doesn't look right to me. And I think it's because I turned this... When in doubt, go back to the instructions. <laughs> okay, so this is how this guy was on here. And I stamped her. Which way did we stamp here? 
Okay, so if I stamped it like that, flower goes like that. All right, I was off. Not by much, just a little bit. So same kind of thing. I'm just following this indentation down at the bottom here. There's a little indentation at the bottom of the stamp and I'm just lining that up with the center. So I guess we'll find out shortly here. All right, I'm gonna stay with the yellows on this one. This one is called Honey Drizzle. A bit darker yellow. I'm going to stamp that one again. It's a little splotchy. Okay, not too bad. So the key with these is to make sure you always have your center lined up. Okay, so for number four, it's a little easier because all we need to do is follow the center. So I know that that lines up with the center exactly. And now I'm gonna go in with my purples. And this one is called Deep Iris, which is another Altenew Mini Ink. It's the third in the purple series. And once again, I'm going to stamp that again. Okay, not bad. Starting to look like the traditional pansy here. And then the last one is just this detailed layer. And this needs to be our darkest color. And again, we're just lining up the center, having it radiate out. And I'm going to use Midnight Violet for that one. Just super dark. And I'm going to do that one one more time. I think maybe I didn't line that up correctly. I should have probably moved over a tiny bit more to the right, but that's okay. There we go. Pretty cool looking pansy once you figure out how to line it up. Okay, so I want to make a real quick mask. So I do have sticky notes here somewhere on the desk. Here we go. So I'm just going to take the largest stamp again, put it on a stamping block, and just gonna stamp out one of these colors here. I really just need the outer edge so I can see where to cut it out. going to cut just inside that outer edge. You don't want to really leave a space because when you go to stamp, the stamp will automatically leave a space, a line, just because there's a the layer of paper, the post-it note, um, raises the stamping area. So there will automatically be a small shadow line between the paper and the post-it note. So you want to cut on the inside of the stamped line here. You don't want to leave any kind of space there. And almost done. All right, so any places here where I see any of that post-it note, I want to try to get as up into that line as I can get. That'll give us a nice clean edge. OK, 
Okay, so now we have that. All right, so now I'm going to try to do two at a time. And I'll show you what I mean by that. This will speed up the process a little bit here. Is I'm going to go in with two different sizes. So we have already done a larger one. I'm going to go over here to stamp B. And I'm going to put it down right here. And I'm also going to go down with stamp C which is down here. So two different size pansies, but that's okay. We're gonna put one on the right, one on the left. And I'm just going to stamp those out in some couple of different colors. Let's do some orange cream. This is the lightest orange, did I? Good thing I didn't stamp that down. Make sure your stamps are facing upward. This one, I put down the stamping face way. Whoopsie, that would have not have been fun. All right, the other one is fine. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Just lost my mask. So that's what I meant by see that paper layer there. So you want to cut as close as you can because there is a little gap there where the post-it paper, the masking paper raises the stamped image. So even though it's very thin, it's still raising that image. So we want to make sure when we're pressing this down, we're getting as close as we can to that mask to fill that area. Okay, so that was orange cream. That was actually much brighter than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. All right, so now we can go in with the next layer of stamp B. And just lining up the top of that one. And number two for stamp C. That one has a little edge that kind of pokes out. That pokes out right over here on the right. So we're lining up the little edge on the top and the little poke on here. There's a little triangle poke there. And I guess I'll go in with a little bit darker orange. This is called Autumn Blaze. These are gonna be some bright orange uh, pansies. That came out pretty nice. One more time. three. So for layer three, we have to look at the centers and line up the centers. And we're going in with a very dark orange, which is called fire brick.
All right. them backwards I'm like that looks way too big for that flower okay here we go so on this one I'm lining up the centers and this one I'm also lining up the centers and I believe this is nope there's one more layer for the larger one Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go in with a reddish color. I have a dark, let's see here, I think we got to go in with some Hero Arts. I don't have the Altenu. And I'm sorry, I don't know the names of these Hero Arts colors. This is like a reddish Hero Arts. Came in one of the kits. That is some bright red. I'm already going to stamp that once because there is one more center to stamp out. I think that's it. Yeah, there isn't another one for C. Oh, no, here it is. This one here radiates along this one. There we go. Wow, that really makes the flower pop, putting that center in there. So let me show you guys what that looks like. There we go. And then to finish it off, I think I'll just do one more small one right in the center there over the masking. And I think we have enough flowers. Let's see here. And we can actually do some foliage real quick. some of these leaves this first green is called tangled leaf from Altenew really light green the leaves are really easy to line up color green is called forest green I'm gonna stamp that a second time Third layer for here, and where 
is our third leaf. And our darkest green is called evergreen. Again, the last layer is usually the most detailed, so that's why it's the darkest. You really don't need too much of that. That looks pretty good. slide a small flower right in here. Actually, I'll probably do two really small flowers. I'm going to start with one right now. <laughs> and you're not going to see a whole bunch of this. It's going to basically look like these small flowers are kind of tucked in behind. I think I'll do some blues and purples for these. So this one's called Caribbean Sky, really light blue. And this is Flower E. And whoa, that was so light it didn't even come through. Let's try that again. And all I'm gonna do is move it over and do the center. And I'm going to do that in a light purple. So one will be blue and one will be purple. This one's called Lavender Fields. And again, we're, we're stamping right over two of the masks. Yeah, there's a little bit going on that flower, but it's really not going to matter because they're darker colors. Okay, this is the second layer. It actually might be easier just to do this on a stamping block. Okay, the next color blue is Parisian blue. And again, I want to make sure that I press down and get in on those masking papers. The next color purple is called Deep Iris. What I should have probably done is lifted this and had the flowers go on the outside. Let me correct that real quick. Okay, so how do we fix that real easily? actually going to move to a small stamping block because we are using these small ones and I'm going to re-stamp this guy, this little flower, over the baskets. Because we want that basket to show through. And then again in the purple. Because these are darker colors, they will show through. It'll be fine. Going to the next layer. This is called Midnight Violet for the purple. Very dark, dark purple. blue we are going to stamp out in sapphire deep dark navy blue and I'm just gonna go back to the first layer because that one I missed and just restamp that first layer real quick in the lighter colors There we go. 
now we look like we have flowers coming outside of the basket. And then for the center, there is a tiny little center. I don't know how much of it's going to show up. It's very, very small and detailed. I'm going to use this Hero Arts Very Deep Dark Purple for both flowers. So here again, all I'm doing is lining up the center of the flower. And like I said, very little of that is really going to show up. But it really makes it stand out. Okay, so I think we're done with our little flowers here. Let's reveal and see what it looks like. All right, so we have our little flowers and it, the ink bled through on the, um, the mask there, but it went through underneath. But it does look like these two flowers are popping out. These two flowers are inside the basket coming out. And then all I would do to finish this off is to give it a little sky. So I have this nice, I think this is a My Favorite Things stencil. It's just little clouds. If you don't have one, um, you can rip a piece of paper. I also used to have one that was just scalloped paper. And I'm just going to grab a blending tool. And I already have the blue ink out, so I'm just going to use a little bit of this and a little blending tool and just lightly brush over that, giving us some clouds. I'm going to rotate the stencil again. I did not go back into the ink. I'm using the ink that's already on the blending tool. I'm trying not to go over my flowers. Rotate the stencil again. And then all I would do for the bottom is grab another blending tool and grab some green ink. And just lightly cross the bottom just to make it look like grass. Very gently swipe some of that up. And then we put that on a card front and we have our little basket of flowers. Oops. And we can easily put a sentiment on the front or on the inside, but a nice little pansy basket of flowers. So that's the tutorial for this week's card at the Mod Squad Challenge, sponsored by Kitchen Sink Stamps. If you enter the challenge, you have the opportunity to win a $25 gift card from Kitchen Sink Stamps. I love seeing you guys' creations. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below. I'm happy to answer them and help you guys out in any way I can. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, I appreciate your thumbs up. And please join us over at the Mod Squad Challenge blog. Bye-bye, guys.